going to do a recap of day five. That's the last game of round two before the the playoff the um, tiebreaker start tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's July seventeenth, and for the rest of the World Cup, with a couple exceptions, I'll be doing live commentary um, with either Naroditsky or Danny Wrench. Um, probably mostly Naroditsky. I think so far it's been Naroditsky and Topolov. And I think Ifan came in once um, and joined them, maybe twice. Um, so Topolov's not going to do it anymore. And Ifan's either going to do it zero, one, or two times, depending on her schedule. So starting tomorrow, it'll be me and Naroditsky on the uh, chess.com, uh, Twitch, and YouTube. You can watch live. Um, it starts 8 a.m., Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific. So European friendly, because it is in Europe. <clears throat> and so forth. So there you go. Um, now the exception is I'm going to the the U.S. Senior State Championship event. Um, it's like the best senior in every state. I think about of the 50 states and the other things that are allowed like D.C. and California has two federations, the Northern and Southern. Um, I think there'll be probably about 40 players will attend. It's also at the same time as the Barber, the Denker, and there's another one. I know the other one too. You know, one's elementary, one's middle, one's high school. Um, I know the other one. Rockefeller, I think, is the other one. Yeah. So there are going to be four tournaments going on simultaneously while the U.S. Open is going on at the site of the U.S. Open, confusing the audience, which will be me. I should be one of the youngest players, if not the youngest, because I'll be 51, and you have to be 50 or over. Although I am turning 52 in September. So. And so forth. Hello. I know you miss me. I've only been on every, every single day. Terrible. How could I? Anyway, as I said... Um, before some of you got here, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, live coverage the next, I mean, until the World Cup ends, on the Chess Twitch page and YouTube page live, usually with Naroditsky, um, every day except July 31st to August 3rd, because I'll be in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, playing in a senior event. Um Otherwise, every single day I'll be doing commentary uh, on, you know, the chess.com, not on my, not on my Twitch, uh, and so forth. Um, yeah, they're getting rid of Top Love and getting me, so the analysis won't be as good, um, but, but what? I don't know. My name's easier to say. Something. Yeah, et cetera. Okay, um, yeah. I'm USCF rating wise, I'm going to be one of the top three players. I might be one, but I don't, I'm not sure. But I'll definitely be top three. Probably be about 40 players. All right, um, let's, let's get it started. Ha! <clears throat> okay, Magnus needed to draw to win the match, and he wasn't in any danger, so he played for a win. Now, these, the, these are positions, which I've discussed every day with you guys, where the engine says it's all zeros, but only white can win. Black can't win. No matter how badly Magnus plays, he'll draw. However, if Martinovich plays badly, he will lose. And then some. So even though it's all zeros, that's insinuating that black plays perfectly. White can play like a doofus. Okay, so White has a simple plan, move his king here, and his other plan is to take that. So bishop d6 is clearly the best move. Then they, they move their kings up. Okay, and again, the engine says not only is it all zeros, but that every move is all zeros. And usually that means it's an easy draw, but it's not. White's king is better, White's pawn structure is better, and... I mean, the knight's better than the bishop. The knight can go everywhere, and the bishop's sort of stuck. 
So it should be a draw, but white has all the winning chances. These kinds of positions, super GMs who are, let's say, 2750 and higher, something like that, they're really good at drawing these worst positions. Lower rated players are not good at drawing worst positions, but they are good at complaining and saying, oh, I was a drawn position. They're good at that. I should have drawn. The position was drawn. The engine said all zeros. They're good at doing that and then losing. But you got to actually draw the position. Frankly, terrible. A lot of the games that I win against people rated 2,000 to 2,400, um, if you want to know if it's Feedy or USCF, it's first one, then the other. We just have endings where the engine says it's equal, and then I win, and then they're like, I should have drawn. I mean, in chess, you you know, no, you should have. You did or you didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So A6, that's not an engine move. Engine doesn't like it because black spawns are now fixed and white can try to attack them. Um, the engine prefers bishop here, here, or here. I mean, I wouldn't play b6. That's the last move I would play. Because after a6, I would be really worried that the engine says b5 is fine. I'm not doing that. Okay. Magnus played this really interesting move knight here. And he's tempting his opponent to play this move. And his opponent was tempted. And it seems obvious to anybody why it's going to go here. Magnus did not do that. Magnus played the much more interesting knight d3 because he's thinking if you take this, I'll check and then I'll take this b pawn. And, you know, then black has two isolated pawns. White has a passed c pawn. The bishop on a5 is attacked. So let's see what the engine thinks about that. You can't play king d6 because of the fork. So you have to go the other way. Yeah, and this is... Um, Thanks, Dusty Lupus, for the $3.54. For some reason, I didn't hear that. Shouldn't I have heard that? Is that something I should hear? And and I didn't hear it, but I don't know why. Uh, volumes at 70. Wait, LG? That's, that's not right. That's the wrong volume. Okay. And yeah, now I know why I didn't hear it. Yeah, th these, all of my equipment is used for a chess camp. Then when the camp's over, we put everything back and change everything. And that that's never happened where it changed um, the, the what speakers we're using. That's, I, usually that's not something that changes. It's weird. So now if somebody, yeah, thanks, Curious Chimpanzee. It should work now. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it should just, just work now. If it doesn't work now, then I got to fix it again. Also, when I make moves, they're making noise when I make moves. Did they make noise before? Probably they didn't, and I didn't notice. Anyway, it should work now. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is better for white because those pawns are weak. So he didn't allow knight c5 check. Um, he played bishop d6. B3, just chilling. Um, now, in this position, <clears throat> for some reason, uh, Fleetwood Mac showed up to watch the event. There's no spectators allowed, but they gave them a special dispensation. And the guy with black didn't know what to do. Like, if he goes here, this. If he goes here, then this. If he moves his king, then this. So they saying you can go your own way. Now it turns out the engine still says every move draws. Okay, crazy like Fox News. Um, so he played one of them, Bishop E7. Okay, N now in this position, uh, after uh, move 50, Bishop E7, it looks like, well, wait a minute. Why did you just give this pawn away? And he didn't give the pawn away. He goes here, and he wins that pawn. And it's a dead draw. And it's, that's really drawn. Okay, so Magnus played b4. 
And he went back, still a draw, c4. Now the engine only likes bishop c7. The difference between knight here, knight takes pawn check, then and now, is in those positions we looked at earlier, that we had taken the a pawn, so you couldn't play king d6. Knight takes was forking the, the king and bishop. Now, uh, he played bishop f8, which is a mistake. Always play bishop f8. If you play this, and Magnus is like, give me that pawn, then the knight, there's nowhere to go. And then after this, we have the simple trick, and then it's a dead draw. Everything's a draw. And the game would end like this. Very nice end. Yeah. Okay. And then draw. All right. Um, but he didn't do that because that's a lot of calculation. So he played this move thinking, all right, if he takes this, I'll take that. That's a draw. That is correct. But Magnus played c5, and now you can't play bishop d6. So now black is actually worse. It's still a draw, but now you got to be careful because you're going to lose a pawn. Okay, he played bishop h6, which is a blunder. Because he was thinking knight takes pawn, bishop d2, the knight goes back to d3, and then he just chills. He's like, all right. And then just chill. How are you going to win? Can't move that, can't move that, can't move that. Don't want to let black's king walk in. Can't move your knight. Draw. Okay. And let's see what happened here. Yeah. All right. Now it turns out white's better here too because white can check and play this. But probably it's a draw. Okay. And and unfortunately, Magnus played b5. Now b5 is also a draw, but now it's tough. And people that are using their engines, like me, they're like, oh, the guy's blundering. What's wrong with him? I mean, you can't cheat with the engine, so it's easy to blunder. In this position, one move draws, and every other move loses, and the move that draws doesn't look like a move you want to play. So it's understandable in mild time trouble and the fact that he knows the match is over, because if the game ends in a draw, still loses the match. So, I mean, you know, it's tough to play black here. Truth hurts. Let's see, etc. Now, also, as you notice, in the behind me, we have those pictures. Um, we're getting a new picture of Fabi getting the COVID vaccine. No. GM can't see subscribe. Finally, a GM watching my stream. Okay, so the only move that draws is King D seven, which hangs the pawn with check. But that's the only move that draws. Then you take. Then you play king c8, and the engine says this is a draw, but white, it's much better for white, but the engine doesn't see any way white can win. So b6 is the only winning attempt, and then bishop d2, attacking this pawn. Knight c4 is the only winning attempt. Bishop b4, and you know, black just chills. You know, king b8 and just doesn't do anything. How's white going to win? If white moves the knight, I take this and I have a passed a pawn. And if you play c6 at some point, you're, you're trading pawns, which you don't want to do. And this looks like maybe it's winning, but it's not. I play bishop here. The thing is, this is perfect. It's better than perfect. Next to, I mean, perfection is crap next to this. White has everything where he wants it, but it's his move. I mean, you can move your king back and let the, like, you know, you can't move your knight. So you can't go here because I take it. So the best move according to the engine is b7. Makes sense. You know, maybe you take this pawn. And then we chill. Bishop e1, always chilling. And the reason king b6 doesn't win, there's one reason. And this is why black didn't play this way, because you have to see all this. This looks dead lost. I take this and you resign. But this draws. And if king takes, I take your pawn. And if knight takes, it's stalemate. All right. So that's like a tricky draw, but it draws. 
So the engines say king d7 is a draw. And even then, black has to play pretty well. Okay, so obviously you can't calculate all that unless you have like two hours. So you didn't calculate it all. Uh, that's actually funny. Okay, so instead he blundered, then Magnus blundered, then he blundered, then Magnus blundered, and then everybody's like, Magnus is a genius. Magnus is the greatest player of all time. Magnus, 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 Magnus. Then they have to go to the hospital because they hurt their fingers typing Magnus so much, etc. Very strange. Uh, Mad Hatter PNG subscribed. Good, good. Go GM Cancy. You're the best. Okay. So instead of King D7, Black made the losing move. A takes B5. And now, if you know about pawn breakthroughs, C6 is pretty obvious. If you take on C6, I queen my A pawn. So you can't take on C6. Well, then white's going to take on b7. The game, now white's winning, okay? Oh, king d6, another mistake. Bishop f8 lasts longer, um, but, you know, you probably wanted to go home. So. Okay, king d6, c takes b7, king c7, obviously. a6, obviously. Bishop f8. Always play bishop f8. Okay, now white has two winning moves. King d5, or knight takes e5. Magnus played one of them. Good. Okay, bishop d6. Now, Magnus played double question mark move, throwing away the win. And when this game was going on, after Fleetwood Mac came in, Phil Collins came in. Man, should I have said Genesis? I think it's just Phil Collins. Yeah, and, you know, the Arbiters were telling Phil Collins, because he doesn't know how to play chess, like, yeah, Magnus going to win. And then after Magnus' next move, out of the blue, Phil sang, throwing it all away. All right. Right. So here he blundered. After King here, resigns is the best move. Resigns is forced. There's no other move. There's no move that makes any sense except resigns. Now, here, here's why. If I play knight d7 or knight c6, the, I'm threatening the queen, and you can move your king, and the bishop protects this. Well, if the bishop moves, that's not the case. If you play here, here, if you move anywhere with your bishop, I go here, and then I queen. So you can't do that. If you do this, this is an easy, easy, easy king and pawn and win. Um, so b4 is the only move that makes any sense at all. Okay, now knight c6 threatening the queen. You have to move your king. You can go here. You Stop it. You can go here or here. If you go here, I play a7. And if you play king b6, I, I take this and I queen. So king d5 is instant resignation. But Magnus wanted to be cute because it's hard not to want to be cute. You want to play like a cute move. And usually somebody who's, you know, world champion and top of all time, they're just all business. Karpov's playing king d5 here and he's world champion. Okay, Botvinnik's playing king d5. Uh, Spassky's playing king d5. Smithslaw's playing king d5. But Magnus... He doesn't mind being cute. He doesn't mind. So he thought everything wins. I'll win this way. Okay, which does not win. Um, and this is the only move that wins, actually. And the gawking rabble is saying that Magnus instantly played knight d7. The obvious idea is I'm queening, and if you take my knight, I go here, and I'm queening. So what's weird about this, from Magnus' perspective is there's only one move to analyze for black, and that move draws. Man, we're gonna get big donations now. God damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So playing knight d7 quickly, or even playing it at all, he basically should be ashamed of himself. And I was told, because I 
I sent an email to the organizers, and I'm like, Magnus played 97? And they went, no, Magnus was in the bathroom. So Henrik Carlson, his dad, came up and played 97. Then when Magnus came back, he's like, what the hell? So that it was still Carlson, so the arbiters allowed it. Also, we haven't had a we haven't had a train yet. Skill three R T V subscribed and said go Ben. Correct. Look at this horrible blunder Magnus played. Where are you? Yeah. Maybe I'm, I have to finish that real quick. Ah, oh, you didn't see the horrible blunder Magnus made. No, but he's so good that he won anyway. Getting a printout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, um, since the engine's looking one billion moves ahead, it says King D five is mate in fifteen. But king d5 is real easy to analyze. If the bishop moves anywhere, then knight c6 wins or knight d7. If the bishop takes, king takes, it's obviously a win. And if b4, knight c6 obviously wins. So, or knight d7. But, but, well, so, I mean, this is just easy win. And this move, the reason Magnus shouldn't play it is if he's like, what should black do? Which he does every move. There's only one move he can make that makes any sense at all. Obviously, you can't let me queen with check. You can't take the nine and allow a7. You have to move your king so the bishop defends b8. And you can't move your king to d8 because I play a7. So that leaves one move, and that move draws. So it's weird. I don't, I, I literally, yeah, I don't know. Okay, he played king c6, and now the game is a draw. With correct play. I didn't say they played correct, but so knight d7 is a really bad move for someone of the ilk of Magnus, especially known for his endgame prowess. Big money, big money, no whammy, stop. 999. Hey Marriott today. Actually, I you were here <clears throat> when you were here when Italy beat England. And you said it, it's 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 coming Rome or something, something funny. You, know, you made some joke. Some pun that everybody else made. Yay! Go Mariachi Day. Yeah, we want to go back to Rome or Italy or something. We want to do something. We're definitely going to go back to Italy um, in the next two or three years because we, we loved Italy. Yeah. Go Italy. Uh, very poor ilk. That's right. Yeah. So what was I watching? I was watching... I'm still watching the series, even though it's 10 years old. Uh, sorry. I didn't watch it when it was on. I'm watching Baskets. I'm on season three. And um, the, the, the annoying brother, because he plays the twins, the one who's annoying, he says to his mom, you know, the somebody in the, the I, don't, I, don't, I don't like their ilk or whatever. And then the mom says, you don't like elk. And he says, no, mom, I said ilk. It's the word of the day. Like he has a word of the day. 999 sensitives. Council of Rooks. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's only one move that a lower rated player would analyze here. And that's queening. By the way, if you play here, then I take and, yeah. Okay. Just so you know. Okay, so queen takes, takes, check. Now, one of these moves draws and one of them loses. The more obvious one draws, although I would think this draws too, but it does not. Um, this move loses for a very funny reason. White to move and win, there's only one winning move. Confusing the audience. Thanks, the real Greg. I'm after a fresh again. I'm not seeing a train. I don't see a train, and I've refreshed like four times. Frankly, delicious. Does that mean there's no train? Hmm. Boo, boo. Yeah, a7 does not win. King b7, knight c6 is a book draw. You can't win that. This is actually something you should know. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I have this pawn. That doesn't matter. Yeah, this is a book draw this position. K 
King here, King here, Papa John's. This is a known book draw. After King A8, you have to let me play King B7. Because it's stalemate if you don't. And then after King B7, I can always play King A8. So you can't win. This is, this is a draw. Okay. That's actually a known, a known draw. So in this position, King C7 loses, as somebody in the chat pointed out, Knight D7. And now black can't approach the pawn, and black can't take the knight. So, you know, white could just win this way if he wants, or th this way if he wants. doesn't matter. Now it's just winning. So after knight takes, king b6 does draw, and the threat is king here. And if I take your knight, I draw. If I take your a pawn, I draw. No move that you make stops king a7. Draw. Okay, so Magnus didn't play b8 and draw. Magnus played king d4. Now... Black draws very simply by playing bishop c7 to d6. And that's it. Draw. Nobody can do anything. So he, he did. Okay, good. Good start. Okay. Great. And then, unfortunately, he played quadruple question mark bishop g3. I don't know why he didn't just keep playing bishop d6 to c7. I don't know. I mean, Magnus can't be doing any of this stuff because, you know, he's going to lose. You got to watch it, right? Magnus has to keep his king, you know. So it's just a dead draw, here, here, draw. There's like no analysis. So the only reason to play here is you think like this is happening and when he plays king here, you want to check him away, which doesn't work. So th this was just nonsensical. He did here, he did here, he did here. Then he's like, wait, I can still lose. So this is a horrible blunder because now Magnus can block the bishop from the queenside pawns. 95 check. So bishop g3 is an absurd move. Why would you want your bishop not defend? It? What? I've never been so mad. Yeah. Well, this guy's a good player, but, you know, truth hurts. Yeah. Sometimes you blunder. I still didn't see a train, but maybe I maybe I missed it. Because we got the 999, and then we got, oh, maybe it resubscribed. Two months. Nine, I guess we didn't have a train. All right. Anyway, so, okay, so king c7 is obviously forced. King e4. Now, uh, yeah, now, now it's losing. Now, now he can't win. All right, he can't draw anymore. Okay, b4, knight d7, threatening to queen, so you have to t play king c6, king d3. And what's funny is, if this pawn's here, as Topolov pointed out, it's a draw. But he had to play b4 in this position because he didn't have another move. If he plays bishop h2, then I go here, and if you play b4, it's the same thing. And if you play, you know, something, I go, I, I go here, and, you, and I'm going to win. You, you, there's nothing you can do. You can't play king here, king here, or king here, which you need to do. You can't play king here because I play a7. So this is just re resigns. You can't let that king go to d5. So you play b4, distracting the king. Right. And if the pawn was here, if he could play check, he could draw now. But too bad. So he tried to defend his pawn, but trying is the first step to failure. Yeah, and now he's in Wang Chung. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. The bishop has to defend b8, and it has to defend the pawn on b4. d6 is the only square he can do that. The black king has to stay on c6. If the king is somewhere else, white plays a7 and wins. And if king c7, I queen. So you have to move your bishop and give this pawn away now. There's nothing. You're in Zugzwan. So he did. And then... By the way, uh, Topolov or Naroditsky, one of them, I forgot which one, points it out, king d4 to come around does not win. But king d3 does. Now black has a brilliant saving move. King takes knight. And a7, which always wins, does not win. Because check and take the pawn. So king d4 would have been a colossal blunder drawing the game. 
Let Magnus play king d3. And he's, he's coming. Uh, 95 check is unnecessary. He could just, but okay, this is this is fine. King c7 is forced. And now he can't move. Yeah, I think he resigned here. Yeah. So Magnus wins the drawn ending after the guy blundered and was losing. Magnus blundered and it was a draw. Then the guy blundered and he was losing. The, the strangest part of that, I don't know if it was knight d7 or bishop g3. I don't know. Because knight d7, like, this is such a stupid move because this resigns. Like, this is just resigns. So it's weird to go here. Uh, and then when black is repeating the position by moving his bishop back and forth, and then he's like, oh, I'll go there. And then after 95, his bishop, I mean, what? Why would you want your bishop, you know? Bishop d6 to c7 was working out great. And the only reason to play bishop g3 is like you're afraid of the king coming in. If the king plays, goes to f6, that pawn's really strong. You can't go here now because I go take it. But that, that's as far as the king can go. You can't, you can't keep going because this guy's going to keep going. So that was just very strange. And when the game ended, Magnus obviously said, like, just bishop d6 to c7 is a draw. But I don't think Magnus knew that knight d7 threw it away, but maybe he did. Like, maybe he thought in this position it's a draw, but it was a draw anyway. I don't know if he thought that, because if he plays king d5, like, black resigns. So I'm, I'm, I don't know what Magnus was thinking when he played knight d7. It's possible he missed king c6, but I don't know. That's weird. King d5 wins so easily... And it's the most natural move. I think he thought they both won. And this wins quicker. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, bishop g3 is weird after you're just repeating the draw. And then I'll go here and lose. All right. Now, of course, for the score of the match, it doesn't matter. If the game was a draw, Magnus goes on to the next round. But still, black against Magnus, when you're not a famous person... And you draw when the guy's trying to beat you the whole game. That's pretty good. Etc. All right. So he yeah, he realized. Okay. Next. Your. So next. Okay. This is really cool. Now we can't pronounce anybody's name. So you know these guys are good. Okay. And Votacek or Votacek, whichever you prefer, he used to work um, with Anand, uh, preparing for world championship matches. Okay, now first thing he did was always repeat. Now obviously, white's up a pawn, so white's trying to win, and black's threatening check winning his rook, and he's also threatening this pawn which draws. So if he plays rook c5 and defends his pawn, rook h4 takes on b4 as a draw at least. So he has to play king g4, and then always repeat. Hooray! And they agreed to a draw. Let's go to the next game. No, no, that's not what happened. But always repeat. Now in this position, um, Black didn't want to defend passively because he thought that would be hopeless. He thought if he just did nothing, eventually White would win. The engine sort of agrees with that. It says White's like plus two. Better drawing chances by doing nothing. But instead, Alexeyev forced a reckoning uh, because he has a hole in him and it can't be filled. He can't kill enough or leave, you know, leave enough misery to fill the hole. And he needs revenge. Revenge for what? For being born. Anyway, so he played rook g5. Now, the problem with counterattacking, let's say you're like, I literally don't care about this pawn, so I'll go here. Now it's a draw because black doesn't take the pawn, he goes here. And this is just a dead draw. No, white's not even better anymore. If I take this, it's equal material. And if you go here, I take this, it's equal material. So rook c7 doesn't work. Rook h4 is shallow and pedantic. Grandmasters don't play moves like that. That's the worst square ever for the rook. Terrible. 
and the engine says all zeros because you, you can't win with your rook there. Okay, so white plays the only move that could win, and he knew it won. He, he knew. He played rook c5. Now, in my opinion, which I guess doesn't matter, but I'll give you my opinion anyway, black should be ashamed of what he did here. Shame, shame, shamed. Because he's good enough um, to figure out what the result will be and, and people like him and, you know, whatever. Okay, so now Alexeyev made a very bad move. He could probably be losing but last longer with Rook G7 and just chill and lose in 400 moves instead of losing immediately. And he's good enough to calculate all the way to the end, but he did not. So that's not a good fighting spirit to play a move that loses immediately instead of a move where you might lose, but it'll take you know, 30 more moves. And he played Rook takes, and that just loses immediately. And if I thought Rook takes lost as the game shows, I wouldn't play it. I'd play Rook G7, and I'd lose in 1,000 moves. But okay, he just lost without any fight. Okay, and the, the, the reason it's lost is White has to play super accurately to win, it is possible Alexei didn't see what White could do here. Then I give him a pass. But if he said, I hope this is a draw and didn't analyze, or if he had less than five minutes on his clock, which is very likely, then okay, I give him a pass. So White's winning here, but this is a very difficult win. If you're not a Grandmaster, it's hard to find the next few moves for White. If you're using an engine, it's really easy. Oh, it's so easy. Nothing's easier. If you're using an engine, you can write the right move in the chat over and no problem. Easy. Now, here's what you guys do. You, you guys. Now, half of you are just looking at your engine and putting the move. Okay. The other half are like, I think this is good. Am I right? No. You're always wrong when you didn't calculate it. You're just wrong. Even if the move is the right move and it does win, you're still wrong. Because you don't know it's the right move. You don't know that it wins. You're just asking me. If you say, is C6 right? If C6 was right, you're still not right because you don't know. If you said, C6 wins, look at this analysis I did. I mean, my engine did. I mean, I did. If you're like, does this win? D -d does this win? D okay. If you're asking, you don't know the answer. And, and, and the player with the white pieces... He knew he was winning here. That's why he played rook c5. That's why he played king f3. He had calculated that this is winning. Otherwise, he wouldn't do that. Etc. Yeah, just saying like, hey, I was right. I said a legal move. And out of the seven legal moves, that was the right one. Yay. That's not how chess works. You figure it out or you don't figure it out. Okay, the only winning move is king e4. And after the obvious, frankly, takes, there's one winning move. Now there's a lot of legal moves. I think there's 11. 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. So out of 11 legal moves, one wins. The truth hurts. You may be right. Yeah, f4, then black plays king g6, and it's, it's not difficult to draw. The only winning move is king f5. Okay, so king h4 is forced, obviously. f4. And he played h5. The other move is this, and that actually transposes into sort of what happened in the game. Here, h5, etc., mainly etc., and then there's more than, I mean, this move wins immediately because it trades queens. There's, there's two legal moves and they both trade queens. King h3, I check and take. King g2, I check and take. Your king's on h1 and then, okay, I win easily. So instead of king g3, he played h5. And now he played king g4, slightly different than king g3. So same position. 
but the king's on g4. The king's on g3, queen here, check. Now, we can just play, it turns out every check wins. We can go here and transpose to the other position, but he played queen g7. You can't play king here because you lose your queen. And if you play king to the h file, I win your queen or trade queens and then this. So here, here he resigned. A little late, but. So this king of pawn inning is dead lost. If white plays king here, king here, that's like the last hard move to find. Then it's a win. And maybe Alexei even saw that that won and hoped that his opponent didn't do it. Or maybe he just was in time trouble and he figured the rook and pawn ending is lost. Maybe I can draw this. Truth hurts. But normally you don't go, I mean, at the super GM level, you don't go into dead loss king and pawn ending and then resign in a few moves. And you play, you know, try harder. Evil Gin subscribed. Hooray. What's wrong with king e5? Oh, in this position? Then I go here and it's a draw. See, king f5 traps the black king. If I can go here and here, I'm, I'm not worse. Yeah, you're actually risking losing when you go here. Because I have the outside passed pawn. So, I mean, this is a draw, but I'd rather have black now. Because, you know, you can't queen anymore. F4, if you play F4, for example, I, I go here and, you know, just a draw. Also, other moves draw. H5 draws, king here draws. Right, you don't want black to play king here and stop you from queening. You want to play king A5, then you queen by force. Yeah, and white, white queens by force. Also by farce. Uh, yeah. That's right. You got to hope for the best. Truth hurts. Okay. Now, if you're on Twitter 24-7, which I assume most of you are, and you know a guy that you don't know named Nate Solon. Nate Solon's from Michigan, so I've known him since he was like nine. And he's probably 40 now. So I've known, I've known Nate, and I know his dad also. His dad was an economics professor at University of Michigan and then Michigan State University. First one, then the other. Gary Solon. And he wrote an important paper showing that people are rich because their family is rich, not because they worked hard. And people didn't like that. They're like, oh, no, I, I work really hard. That's why I'm rich. I deserve it. Not because, you know, my family gave me millions when I was a kid. That's, that's not why anybody's rich. Dumbasses. Okay. And anyway, this position's equal. White has no advantage. However, white has one advantage I did not disclose. Right, sweetie? Mm -hmm. And that advantage is 200 rating points. So he went from completely equal to up 47 pieces and just eight more moves. Man, that's huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Truth hurts. Yeah. Okay, so he went from classy to ashy pretty quickly, right, sweetie? Who? Um, I don't know. I can't say his name. Anyon? No idea what country he's from. Hey, miss, can I have a cord from my phone? Well, it's over here. I have to like give you the. Cord. I mean, it won't reach there. Okay, you can just plug it. In, in fact, it's unplugged. Somebody uh, unplugged it's it. Too oh wait, this one's this one's plugged. You have to give me your phone, and then I'll plug it in. Did it work? Oh, it's, it, you mean it's dead? Okay, yeah, it's working. Okay. Right. Uh, he's bigly smart. Rengar eighty seven subscribed. Thank you. So I've been streaming forty four minutes. No trains. Yeah, trains hurts. I had to um, yeah, put my sweater. Yeah, I know. Okay. Now, let's see how Tomaszewski racked up the point. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this position, the engine says a5 is equal. And he played queen b2, the faux aggressive move. He's like, Rawr, I'm threatening stuff. I'm threatening to trap my own queen. All right, Tomaszewski said, get your queen out of there. And unfortunately, went there. 
God damn. If he played here, he's slightly worse. But, okay, this is, like, crazy like Fox News. So now he's already losing because that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. All right. Queen E3 exclam. And you know where Tomaszewski learned this move? He learned it from his opponent. Yeah. Remember how his opponent went here? Mm -hmm. He wanted to go there. And the rook's trapped. Hmm. That's a funny way to... Right? That, mm -hmm. that, okay. So the guy didn't want to lose his rook. He played the best move, queen a5. Now if you go here, queen b6. Right? Anyway, that was a great maneuver. Here, here, here. Blah. All right, c5. Trapping the queen again. Now the queen's trapped. The best move is rook here. Ugh. Okay, he took, which is a blunder. Knight e5. God damn. Now I like to point out that that's a really good bishop. Remember when I said at the beginning Black should have played a5? See, then you know, good bishop. Then he could have played e5 at some point, but now he can't do anything. He can't move these pawns, can't move his bishop, doubled white pawns, queen is trapped. Horrible. Okay, c4, that's explosive, right? Mm -hmm. Knight c4, now he gets his queen out. Well, I thought he would, but he didn't. Bam! Attacking the c-pawn. Remember when I said black would play queen b6 when the queen was on a5? Well, now he can't play queen b6 because the knight's stopping it. Okay. So he played e5, finally getting his bishop out, except for one thing. Rook d5 trapping the queen. Frankly, ridiculous. And Black saw that. He had a trick ready. You know why his trick didn't work? No. Oh, come on, I say it a lot. I, I don't know. Tricks are for kids. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So queen takes c6. Ready for his trick? Okay. Queen takes b8, whites up a rook. All right. And now the trick. Bishop h3, threatening the queen. See how it threatens the queen? Mm. If the queen moves, I take the bishop and the rook's hanging. Uh -uh. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, who first recommended bishop h3? Um. Go train. Mm -hmm. I'll thank some people while you're doing that. Um, itchy Chimera. Thanks for being itchy. I wonder what Scratchy would say. Itchy Chimera keeps gifting subs. Uh, Jernamora Gerge. Said, why'd you pronounce my name so wrong? And so forth. Shirov is correct. They said Shirov. Mm. Okay. Now, you will know Tomaszewski's name is the Lord when you see this next move. This is the greatest move ever. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Knight E3. Resigns. Remember how I said... Black wanted to take this and then mm -hmm. take that. Well, that he defended it. And the queen's attacked. So that these pieces are all safe. And he's up a rook. If you if you take the rook, hoping 999, thanks, sorry, Kelly. If you take this hoping for this, mm -hmm. first of all, you still lose because your bishop's hanging. But I could play a desperado. I take the rook with check first. And whites up a rook. I like the way when you don't play, you still win because the bishop on h3 is angry. So after knight e3, the engine says white is plus eight. But that was an equal position. And then eight moves later, black had no pieces left. Okay, and that's and 200 points lower rated. It's harsh. And also Tomaszewski won the first game. So he won 2-0. This game didn't take very long. That's why you've heard of Tomaszewski, and you I, never heard of that guy or know what country he's from or anything. Teach him. Yeah. Yeah, knight e3 is really good. Defends every rook, attacks the queen, defends the bishop a little, which doesn't need defending. Great. Okay. This is very nice because it's, it's king and pawn ending stuff. Okay, Adiban just played g5, x-clan, against... You know, the guy with a million names, right? Okay, so it's White's move. So let's analyze the two most likely moves. 
Uh, thanks, Itchy Kamira again. All right, we need two more subs or a thousand cents to dues in the next 10 seconds. Itchy Kamira gets it a sub again. He, he keeps doing it. Good job. Okay, so you could take this pawn mm -hmm. or you could take this pawn. Okay, now he did take, he, he, he took this pawn. So let's look at the other one. Okay. okay, then I trade queens and then I play king here. It's pretty obvious black's winning. And if you, you know, you give me two pass pawns, right? Yeah. So plus a thousand, it says. Plus 10,000. Now, the way you win this is interesting. Okay. You have to put your king on f4. Then you're going to make the guy when he's queening. So I'll just make random moves. Yeah. Okay. And then here. Then you play king f3, and the guy's going to queen, but you know, not really. Okay. So instead of losing that way, he played HG. Yay, thanks, all right, Kelly, for the five subs. Now, it turns out both moves win. Okay, but he took with a queen. That's more forcing. I'm attacking your queen, and if you don't trade, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. If you take that, that transposes to the last variation. So he took that. Okay. Now the king and pawn ending is winning because Adiban took the queen. Adiban wouldn't have played g5 and queen g5 if black wasn't winning here. He knew he was winning. He he wasn't lucky like, oh, it's lucky Adiban's winning this king and pawn ending. It's not lucky. He figured it out, then he did it. Not, not lucky. Okay, so he played king here. And now he's, the guy's like, no, you, you can't move your king in. And he's like, all right, get your king over there. And he's like, fine. So he figured this all out. When Adiban played g5, he figured this out. Okay, black has one move that wins here. What is it? Um, Thanks, R.A. Kelly. You're the best. Thanks, Itchy Kamara. You keep giving me subs. You're the best. Everybody's the best. Um, king d4? Correct. King takes c4 is a draw. Nine ninety nine. Thanks, Ampidian. Uh, if you take an that, if you take and I take, it's a draw. Both mm -hmm. queen. King d four puts him in Wang Chung. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Um, if it's black to move here, I think it's a draw. King e three loses to e five, so you have to take on c four and draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's white's move. <clears throat> Truth hurts. White can't move. The only move that makes any sense, because king takes, king takes is an easy win. I go take your pawn. Is king here, but now I can take your pawn. And so now if you go here, I can go here. So when Adiban played g5, I think he saw this position. He saw takes, queen takes, takes, and he saw that, that this was winning. Uh -huh. was go, everybody. Say. Yeah. Yay. That's a nice final position. If you don't know whose turn it is, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we know it's White's turn, and White's in Zugzwan because he can't move. White's position is better than perfect. But if he moves his king away from the pawn, that's bad. He moves the king away from that pawn, that's bad. Yeah. I knew from the day he was born he was bad. Your trail gifted a sub. Hooray. Okay, now. A few days ago, I was singing the praises of two people, Onashuk and Jeffrey Zhang. Mm -hmm. Onashuk got beat worse than anybody's ever been beaten ever in both games by a player that's like, I don't know, 20 points lower rated than him, or maybe higher, I don't know. Anyway, it was the most embarrassing defeat of my career, watching Onashuk get destroyed. I've never seen Onashuk get destroyed. To be fair, Onashuk is 100 years old, but still... He won the first round very easily, and the second round he got beat like he couldn't play. If I ever see Onashuk, I'm going to be like, what was that? <clears throat> I've never seen Onashuk get beat like that. Conversely, Jeffrey Zhang, who's not 100 years old, he's 20. Now, nah. okay, so the first game, Jeffrey Zhang built a crushing position. He was like plus 1.7. Then he played horrible and drew. Horrible. And I was like, what happened to my horse? 
He had white, he was doing great, and he messed it up. Now he's black, so now I'm looking bad, right? Because I'm like, Jeffrey Zhang, Jeffrey Zhang. And they're like, you're pronouncing Jeffrey wrong. You're pronouncing Zhang wrong. He, he drew the first game with white. You know, you guys terrible. Stuff happened. R.A. Kelly and other stuff. Yeah, Ace Deuce, 100 Cent Deuce. R.A. Kelly, five sub -adus. And Ace Deuce just earned his badge. Yay. I told Ace Deuce that was good, and he said he doesn't need no stinking badges. Now, technically, Ace Deuce refers to what city in Michigan? Um, hmm. I don't know. Ann Arbor. Yeah. Oh. Has two A's. Ace Deuce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. C.L. Smith. You've never left the confines of Alabama. How do you know? Probably Alabama played Michigan in football or basketball once. That's mm -hmm. how we know. You it. probably said it on the stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Flint, boo, boo. You bet I'm winning the World Cup? Um, if you got some odds, yeah. If you didn't get odds, no. There's like 400 players. You can't bet on one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, this is at 103% because I give 103%. All right, now... In this game, Jeffrey equalizes, yeah. then he's slightly better, then he's clearly better, and then he's winning, and then the guy resigns. That's how he beat me. Right, but this guy's better than me. But he just, it looks like he's a, he just can't play. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey's way too good. And the funny thing is, they started from a symmetrical position. Notice it's symmetrical. Did you notice mm -hmm. that? I noticed. Yeah. That's so he's black... <laughs> It, he's black, symmetrical position, and he wins without any problem because he's Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, and, and, and I didn't do this yet, so I could get embarrassed on the stream. Won't be the first time. I'm going to see the game report of this game because Jeffrey played really well. So it still looks boring and, you know, equal because it's boring and equal, mm -hmm. right? Nobody's better here. I've never been so bored. Obviously, queen b3 to d1 to c2 is stupid. So, why are you so stupid? Now, you don't want to take with a queen because of the latent potential against your d-pawn. So he takes with a pawn because he, you know, backed up against the bishop. Okay, so white played queen here, queen here, queen here, queen here, queen here. It is still about equal. Man, chess is hard. Just looks like, and he did it again. Here, 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 here. Now the engine likes black. Hey, Felix Frias. Okay, now he has the winning kingside attack, except for one thing. Okay, and now look at this cool move. The engine likes it. F6. Mm -hmm. He wants to play knife F5. If he doesn't play F6, like, he, like his knight's attacked, right? He moves his knight. Then bishop f6, and then white can't do anything over there. Uh, or c5 is even better, just crushing the pawn on d4. He takes he takes with the pawn. Um, you actually can't take with the bishop. Then after this, it says white's like virtually winning here. You're threatening this. You can't defend it because you can't play king h7. Bishop g7 hangs this pawn. So you have to play ef, which he did. And then knife f5. Pretty good to the white, you know, get, okay. Then Jeffrey plays queen a4 to trade queens, because then this pawn's weak and this pawn's weak. And the guy's like, no, I, I know. Okay, then he plays rook there, attacking the pawn, right? Good, good. Bishop d5, he wants to put his knight in here. He wants to trade queens again. Now, Jeffrey doesn't want to trade queens like this, because this is a really, really, really weak square. Black can put all of his pieces on it. And after this, then he can't. Then white pushes in the center and ridiculous. Okay. So he doubles up on the bubble up. Check. That's funny. He put all three pieces here. He put his bishop there, then his queen there, then his knight there. Mm -hmm. Just to show the dominance that he has.
Looks boring, but white can't do anything. Black's too active. Now, when I was watching this game and I saw this for $100 trillion, which one of my games does that remind you of? It instantly reminded me of a game. Instantly. I said, oh, that's like my game with so-and-so. Um, I don't know. All right, there's, there's 700 people in the chat. Let's see if one of them can get it. Somebody's going to know. No, I don't think so. Where's Kangaroo? I don't think so. <laughs> my comer. I don't know is correct. The one against that guy is correct. What about the one we were just talking about? Uh, Corrales. Mm -mm. I don't know. But uh, Mama Jara, they said. Actually, that's funny. It's Mom and Jara. It, it, it wasn't that, though. Rooks. It was something else. It did something like the rooks in there. Yeah. It reminded me. Mm -hmm. Here's why it reminded me. In this position, black can't play here. And then white plays this blunder, and now this wins. And that was done against me very good. Johnny Cotillo's right. Me against Nick DeFermian. I'm pretty sure it was 94. Could have been 95. I think it was 94. In Chicago. Wasn't it 94? Somebody back me up. Yeah, it's my game with DeFermian. I was white and he was defending and he moved. He actually made the move and had his hand on it and put it back because he realized what he did, but he had to move it. It was his knight. It wasn't a bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, 94. How, why would they? Yeah, come on. Okay. Now, white activated his queen. I mean, you have to defend your knight, right? So there. It's a good square for your queen. B4. Now, look how good B4 is. Look at this. See the queen on B3? If you take, <clears throat> bam! Right? Oh, no, he didn't. Now, if you look at this position, okay, forget about all the moves before it. Just look at that position. Like, if Magnus walks up to this game, he's thinking... God damn, white's getting crushed. That's what he's thinking. He's like, well, black's just crushing white. White's like, ah, and black's raw, mad from a symmetrical opening. And the engine, the engine just says white resigns. Mm -hmm. Okay, always guess Defermian. Very good. I have beaten Defermian twice, so that's okay. All right, so watch the finish. Knight f1, attacking the rook. Queen b2, attacking that rook. And now, Jeffrey, who knows me very well, we played the last tournament, right? Always sacrifice the exchange. Bam! Now, white has a very active position, except for one thing. Yeah. Frankly, terrible. Yeah. What's funny is white played the engine move here. See, this is annoying. So he played the engine move, he got rid of it. And then he resigned. <laughs> There's two pieces and, and a pawn for a rook, and rook g3 is a threat, rook h3 is a threat, and so forth. And mm -hmm. plus six. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey just ran over Mikhailovsky with black. That's the Jeffrey that I know. Like his opponent had no chance that game. And he had white. Go, Jeffrey. So when Jeffrey's world champion next year, I want, you know. When he beats the Pomniachi. No, I haven't been streaming SJ Cantoral, but I do plan to resume. How do you get better at chess? Play like Jeffrey Zhang. All right, let's see how stupid I am. I'm Pietro's there. Why am I? Yeah, he gave money. Oh, Why know. am I so stupid? Good night. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Go, Jeffrey. <laughs> he better have played at least 98 or I'm going to be furious. They're like, the board's wrong. What are you doing? That's what they do. You could have a nice layout. Yeah, how did Jeffrey play? <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. Hold on. <laughs> okay. How'd Jeffrey play? 98.8. .8. Yeah. Frankly, great. You can have some different layouts. And his opponent, well, I have a layout for this, but I don't want to change it. I just like, it's right. too bad for them. Okay. And then 93.1 for white. Mm -hmm. Man, playing 98.8 .8 with black against like a 2600 GM, that's hard to do. But yeah, it just makes the guy look terrible. Like, like why, why am I playing this guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
etc. Well, he played 99.6 against me because he had to play better to beat me. Except for one thing. All right. So I should probably check up front and just make sure everything's fine. Not yet, because, okay, let me show you this first. All right. This is the game you want to see. Then I can come back. This is, this is the game you want to see. Okay, now the reason she wants to see it, she doesn't know. But I'm going to tell her at the beginning. You ready? Mm -hmm. The player with white, mm -hmm. he's 57. Yeah. <laughs> right. You like that. Right now. Well, I don't no, know that I like it especially. No, but the, the, you, know, you like when the old like guys it. win. Well, yeah. Right. Okay. Now, <laughs> in this position, Black made a bad move. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> you wonder what it could be. What, what happened there? Black made a bad move. Am I supposed to find the bad move? Yeah, don't even look at the board. Just tell me. Why are you looking at the board? Irrelevant, the board. Oh, black, oh, F6. Bam! <laughs> now, that move isn't really that bad. I just said it was bad because never play F6. Now, remember when I said this guy was 57? Mm -hmm. Right, watch what he does. Bam! Oh, snap! Wow. Oh, lawful waffle. That's sweet. That'll, that'll teach that guy to weaken the white squares. Right? Mm -hmm. he, he, he's like, I'm 57. Now I'm going to meet you 57 different ways. Now, that move doesn't win, but it shows he's, he's had balls for 57 years, unlike his opponent. Okay. Queen takes h6. So white has compensation for a rook. It's very hard to play black. If you're an engine, you'll take black because you're up a rook and you'll defend perfectly. If you're a human, don't take black here because white's going to perpetual you and checkmate you. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I missed that. Okay, Black played the computer move here because he's a really good player, Alex. He's very strong. Mm -hmm. So he played the computer move, which most people wouldn't think of. Queen C7. The best move, the answer says that's the best move. Okay, Queen takes F6. Now you have to save your bishop, right? Because mm -hmm. otherwise you didn't lose your bishop. And he blundered here. The only good move is to always sack the exchange. That's the only good move. And then after takes, takes, the engine says black is fine, or even more than fine. This is doing great. Now, here's what's funny. It looks like if I check and I check, I'm winning your rook. You see what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. But king e7 saves the day. Okay. So this was the last chance for Alexenko. And he played bishop b3. He's like, I'm up a rook. Okay. Now that move still still draws, still okay. Bishop h3, exclam. His rook got attacked, but he's interested in checkmating his opponent. Bishop takes rook, falls into checkmate. Now here's what's funny about this. After here, the checkmating move is not check. Always play knife f5. So here, white is down two rooks. Two rooks, mm -hmm. uh, two, and, and the black, black gets mated. He's down two rooks. Th this is mate. The only way to stop mate, there's only one move that stops mate in one. It's really hard to find. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. There's one move that stops mate in one. Let's see if anybody can find it. There's one move. They'll be like resigns. That's not a move. There's a chest move that stops queen six mate. Yeah, a AMC, yeah, AMC Donald got it. Yeah. A McDonald, look. Rook F7. Now it's not mate because you go here. Now there's one move that's mate and one. White's a play and mate and one. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, According to you, you don't see pins well. Oh, yeah. I just saw Queen G7. Right, mate. I just don't see pins. Yeah, you always tell me that. Okay. I don't. All right. So, so he <laughs> played Bishop H3, and he said, <laughs> I dare you to take my rook. I double dare you. Then he said, do they speak English and what? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's one move that draws, and he played it, rook F8. 
So the guy played brilliant defending move, brilliant defending move. That move was all right. Okay, bishop e6 check. You have to take it. Take with check. King h8 is the only move. Every other move loses immediately. The reason king h8 is better than moving your king up is if white does a rook lift, you're less scared with your king here because you can block with the rook. If your king's on g7, then, then you're scared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was correct. Check. Rook h7 hangs mate in one. So he played king g8. Rook d4. And now it's blunder time, which is very similar to hammer time. So here, any sideways rook move draws according to the engine. But black didn't see the threat. And so he's like, well, that knight's no good. Knight d5. Let's, let's, let's defend. Okay, and that move loses immediately to queen e6 check. This is actually just an immediate win. So this was the losing blunder. He was, he was thinking, well, rook here, check. I just block with the rook. So I'll just get my knight back into the game. Yeah, but he missed that this is immediately winning. So you can move your king or you can block with a rook. If you block with a rook, it's forced mate, check. You can't move your rook. If you play king h8, check. Only legal move, mate. And if you play king h7, it's the same. It's just one move longer. But it's the same mate. Okay, so you have to play move, you have to play king h8, which he did, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now this is the best move of the game. That rook sacrificed, eh, it was okay. This move, the, and when he played knight d5, I'm sure he missed <laughs> this move. I'm sure of it. It's not a move you, you like would normally think of. Knight e8, attacking the queen and getting rid of the g7 square for the black king and putting the knight into the attack. This move wins immediately. Really nice move. Okay, he doesn't want to lose his queen. If he takes the knight, because always sack the exchange, then you get checkmated. You're, you, when your king goes to the second rank, you can't block the rook check anymore. You just get mated immediately. So he played queen d8, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Check. If you play rook here, queen takes f8, mate. So you have to play king g8. Rook check. And then in this position, he resigned. Or did he play here? He did play here. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Now this is brilliant. This is amazing what he did here. I'm, I've never been so impressed. Now, if you remember my game with Fidel uh, Corrales Jimenez, which we talked about earlier... <laughs> At the end of the game, I could have won easier by playing rook g7 check, king e8, queen h5. But I didn't see queen h5. So, or queen g6. That doesn't work here because if you do that now, there's two rooks that control f7. So watch what, watch what Krasenkov does. He plays knight d6 check. Now if you play rook here... Now the mate works. It's the same mate that I didn't see. And then you made him, you know, you made him here. Mm -hmm. But if you, don't play, if you don't play rook takes knight, then this is the only other legal move, right? Mm -hmm. And then check, only legal move, mate. Yeah. So after an ID6 check, he resigned. So that guy's 57. He's playing a guy rated like 100 points higher. He sacks a rook, sacking, sacking, mm -hmm. and plays brilliantly and wins. Are they both um, GMs or what? Are yeah, they're they? very strong GMs. Yeah. Now, Krasenkov used to be 2,700 feet, but now he's 2,600. But I haven't heard of the other guy. Right, he was 2,700 like 20 years ago, <laughs> and now he's yeah, not. Yeah. The other guy used to be 2,700 also yeah, until right. this game. Hey, um, I should probably go just check on the tournament, make sure everything's going well. Mm -hmm. And I can maybe come back. I got one more game. Yeah. All right, well, why don't you just go on without me? Mm -hmm. And. Um, and I yeah, Krasenkov was good until he was old and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go, Karen. Okay, last game. And actually, I didn't set it up at the right position, which I usually do. So let me get to the right position. Uh... 
Okay. Yeah. This is the right position, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is move 40 in this match. The first game of the match was a draw. This is the second game. And the engine says all zeros. Everything's all zeros. And it says it doesn't even matter what black does. This is all zeros. This is all zeros. And he played rookie seven. So he made the time control. And the engine says all zeros. Okay. Now in this position, even though it should be a draw with correct play, black lost very quickly. And one of the reasons is the engine says it's equal, but if two humans are playing, they want to have white because white's a pawn ahead and white has two passed pawns. Now, obviously, those passed pawns don't look too good because they're both blocked and black's king looks great. And, and, and black made a really bad move here that probably I would make. It's something that I would recommend. So it strategically looks okay, but it doesn't work. Um, Jerpuff is rating with 15. Hooray! Go Puff. Somebody give a shout out. Welcome Raiders. Okay. So the drawing move is Rook D7 attacking the Bishop. And obviously if we go back and forth, that's a draw. So if White wants to win, he can move his Bishop which allows the white rook to black rook to penetrate, or he could play rook d1, and then rook d4 check. The, the 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 king has to go back. If the king goes forward, now black's better, because we got we got some action going on here. And after here, I go here. So I mean, you got to be careful. White's close to losing now. Okay, so instead of rook d7, he activated his king, tax the bishop sort of attacks the pawn, and this is a terrible move. Rook b6, probably rook d1 is better. Probably rook d1 is better. Okay, rook c7 is a blunder. He has to play king c5, which is a really hard move to play when you just play king d4. You don't want to retreat your king, but it's forced. But he played rook c7, bishop e2, and now, now white's winning. The rook is defending this bishop, means my pawn's free, my rook's active, everything is safe now, and this was just a faux aggression. The, the, the king can't do anything. Okay, rook c, it's another mistake. He should have played king c5, e6. Finally, he plays king c5, and he sacks the exchange, because always sack the exchange. Now, rook a6 wins, but always sack the exchange. Okay, it doesn't matter if you take it with the king or the rook. You, you, you lose anyway because this guy's too good. He took with the rook. We could take it with the king just for analysis. King e5. And you, uh, black can't do anything. Black's stuck. And white has a very funny winning plan, which I think he did in the game. If he did it in the game, I won't, yeah, I won't show it because he did it in the game. Okay, so he took with the rook. King e5. Right. And... This is really nice. This is, this is a first class move. I really like this move. Somebody in the chat, find the move. There's more than one move that wins, but this is the class move. This shows who the boss is. Dot, dot, dot is correct. Right, bishop d1. So not only do you win this pawn, which is nice, it's nice, it's very nice, but it's not an apology. I still need the apology. Um, okay. So then, then I'm like going to queen my pawn too. So two for one. Okay. He defends his pawn because he doesn't want that to happen. And then you know, he just loses. And then he's like, yeah, I'm going to go here. I'm the best. And the guy's like, no, you're not. I'll pin. Now king d6 doesn't work because of the obvious c5 check. And then, you know, here, here, and I win up a bishop. Okay. So he plays here, pinning the pawn, king there, check. Now the idea is it doesn't work, but it's a good idea. If I play e7, king d6 wins the pawn. That's the idea. Frankly, ridiculous. 
Hare Krishna's like, Ish don't think so. And Quesada Perez is like, all right, I give up. The only move that looks like it doesn't lose immediately is king d6. Otherwise, I just go here and queen. And then we do it again. c5 check. Distraction. And then, the, then that's it. If the king goes to d7, we queen. If you go here, I go here, and so forth. So, I mean, he lost really quickly from a position the engine said was equal because he played king d4 and his king had to go back to c5. He just wasted time. And then his rook kept going back and forth. He didn't find the right plan right away, which was to try to activate his rook on the d file. With his king on d4, he can't do that. So that's the end of him. Now, somebody points it out on the internets that the Indians keep winning. Every Indian who's at the tournament won, and they're in the second round. So I was like, all right, the second round, all I saw was Indians winning. So I don't know if they all won again. And the men's and the women's. Like the Indian players just win. Nihal Saran won, Pragnananda won, Adi Ban won, Hari Krishna won. Everybody won. And then the woman whose name I can't pronounce, like Hurdavali or whatever, she's like 2,400. Her opponent, by the way, when, when, the, when the, there was three Indonesians who got COVID, mm -hmm. and you know about two of them, one was like a trainer. The two women who were Indonesian who were still left, they didn't play game two, they withdrew. They're like, we're tested negative, but we don't want to cause any problem. Oh, really? So all the Indonesians are all out. Huh. And... Uh, the truth hurts. So the, the Indian woman whose name I couldn't pronounce correctly or spell or say, she was supposed to play the Indonesian woman. Okay. So she didn't walk through. Hey, you got a raid. Super hot dogs. Who? Thank you for the raid. 35. I got Yay. another raid that was like 15. Oh, you did? Where? Go su uh, up here. It was like 15, 16 people. Oh, cool. Yeah, here it is. Oh. Jerpuff. 15. Yay, Jerpuff. Mm hmm and yay hot dogs. Yay, boo Super hot dogs, but yay hot dogs. Super hot dog sauce at the World Open. We were there. So, yeah, you should have saw us. Oh, you did? Super hot dogs? But I wasn't eating any hot dogs. Mm -hmm. All right, and that, so everything's going great out there? Yeah, everything's fine. Better than perfect? We've got a few registrants. Let's see there. Oh, you went by my game? <laughs> Which round was it? Now, in this position, Kieran, mm -hmm. White's Rook is attacked. Based on my teachings, what move did White play? Um, based on your teachings. Yeah, what did White play You know, in this position? Got to um, his Rook. I guess you took the bishop. Always sack the exchange. Yeah. Bam! <laughs> yep, and then he did the song about the sweet loving woman. Did the song about the knife. Then he did the walk. The walk of life. They're round seven. Yeah, very nice. I think I won that round. I think this is the no, final No, I drew position. that round. I drew that round. Three. Mm -hmm. I would have went. I wouldn't have went. Always play Bishop F1. Vidit didn't win his second round match yet. Not yet. Yeah. Always retreat. As long as I have a rule for everything, we're good. Now, in the final position, Karen, mm -hmm. if you go here to win the pawn... Then c5. No! And the king has nowhere to go. Can't go here because I queen. And then I can you know, queen my pawn. Then whites up a bishop. Truth hurts. This reminds me of my game with Fisher. Because I sacked the exchange and I had the pass pawn and all one. It's a different, different kind of position. but Yeah. From 1986, the Midwest Masters. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now... Let me go to the internets for a second. And what did I do wrong? There we go. And you work at a shady. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Take out food place thing. I'm going to show you the thing it reminded me of. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the other thing. Mm -hmm. You know the thing? Okay. So you remember when Jeffrey Zhang, about 10, 15 minutes ago, Mikulevsky played bishop e1, and Jeffrey played rook to the sixth, 
And I said, what game does that remind you of? This is the game it reminds me of. Okay, and the reason is in this position, okay, uh, C4 here, okay, in this position, I'm threatening this pawn. Mm -hmm. And he made a, I mean, he's losing, but he made a really bad move making the win easy. And as he made it, I remember him keeping his hand on and putting it back and then choking on his own rage. Queen e8. Same as bishop e1. Now what did I do punishing queen e8? He gave away a square. He gave it away. Um. Just like in the Jeffrey game. Same square. Except that was white. Let's see, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so in the Jeffrey game, okay, <laughs> in the Jeffrey game, it was, was this that. position, yeah. and he played bishop e1, giving away that square. Okay. Okay. And then in my game, he played queen e8, giving away the same square in reverse, because he's black. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? His queen was here, and he went here. Um, let's see. It's the same. It's the same. Well, exactly. I'm sorry. The, it's it, 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 it's see. exactly the same. All right. Well, let me see it again then. Yeah. Like, show me the other one. Yeah. <laughs> see, he played bishop e1. Okay. And then I got there because his bishop isn't controlling that anymore. Right. So he his queen was on e7, and now he played there. So he's not controlling the same square, but in reverse. The he's e7 blind. square. Which one? This is e7. Right. He's controlling e7. Okay. The queen was on e7, All right. and it was stopping me from penetrating. The reason Can can't figure it out is she never stops me from penetrating. <laughs> so she's like, "What's what are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't see it. Okay, so the queen on e7 yeah. is stopping the rook from going here. Okay. And now it's not. Okay. And so I went here, and then it's over. I didn't take everything. I don't know why I kept looking for something to be on the seventh rank. No, but it's the same as this. Because this is also the sixth rank, and this is the opposite because it's I white. See it now. Defending that, and then I get in there. I got it. So the bishop e one's a ridiculous move. I don't want Mikowski played that. But I, I remember Defermian playing queen e8 and putting his queen back mm -hmm. on e7, then choking on his own rage. You don't need to be all cringy. I didn't okay. see the move, and I'm not ashamed. Yeah. And okay. So, so then, so is. watch the end of the game where I take I everything. Could, half of you guys didn't see it either. Rawr. Look at me crushing him. Look, look, look at that. <laughs> So he wanted me to go here, so then he plays this move, mm -hmm. confusing the audience. See, it's check, and then the rook's pinned. But I didn't do that. I took his rook. And then after this, he resigned, because if mm -hmm. he takes, I checkmate him. Yay. Yeah. Go, Ben. And then as the gawking rabble are definitely saying in the chat now, without me looking at it, that's not checkmate. He can go here. That's why you're gawking rabble. Well, it was hard to see stuff. Mm -hmm. Hooray for Ben. <laughs> yeah, but when I saw the, the Jeffrey's game of Mikulevsky, I was like, just like this game played in 1994. Then the guy tried to tell me 95. Like, like, like I don't know. See, now, let me tell you one reason I like the movie and why you didn't. It's the same reason. It's the same reason. Ready? I probably have to go work. No, no, no. Remember the scene when he says, I remember every meal I've ever cooked for everybody at the end of the movie. And, and then, like, the guy's choking on his rage. I was like, yeah, I remember every... Yeah, that's right. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, this. I remember every game ever that played. That has nothing to do with why I like, like or don't like the movie. But that, that makes no sense what he said. That's silly. The whole movie was ridiculous. It was Karen's favorite yeah, movie. I it was called Pig. I don't understand why people like what they Go do. Go Pig. It was absurd. Yay. No, Go Nicolas it, Cage. <laughs> and there was some underground... Fight Club. Mm -hmm. That was funny. It yeah. was. <laughs> he got beat up no, so he well, could no, get the information. No, it was specific to just people in the restaurant. That's correct. It's an underground fight club. It actually the is underground. Business. And it's for people in the restaurant business. That makes sense. And it had been so many years that he had been there. Right, it had been like 15 years and it was still there. Yeah, He knew it was still there. Queen E8 is much better than Queen e Bishop E1. I don't know. Bishop E1 is really stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's All called right. Pig. Pig. <laughs> this is a dumb movie. Pig was good. Tickle. I mean, Nicolas Cage actually 
very understated acting. Yeah, for once part. he didn't overact. Mm. For once. So, but the star of the movie was the pig. The only, the only reason the movie gets a C plus from me is because he he acted very well in the movie, but um, the script was ridiculous. The plot. Right, I'm gonna line, give you another trillion dollar chance. It's not something. In the I movie, the other the famous years. actor is Adam Arkin. Yeah. He's the dad. His father, R.I.P. Alan Arkin, mm. won an Academy Award for what movie? Darn. Best Supporting Actor. Oh, I'm not going to know. Were there two Allens in MASH? Yeah, but not, that's not, that's not MASH. That's not no. I don't know. Okay. Little Miss Sunshine. Okay. Did you see it? I did see that. He's the old grandfather who's mm -hmm. swearing a lot. Okay. Now. Now, that's a good name. Now, here's the part you're going to remember. I do have to work. No, hold on. <laughs> when he won the Academy Award, are you ready for this? Yes. Who walked out was furious. They were they, uh, they they thought they were going to win the Academy Award, and when they called his name, he walked out. I don't know. Eddie Murphy. Oh, really? Yeah, Eddie Murphy was supposed to win the Academy Award for um, the singing and dancing. Okay. What was that called? I didn't see it. What was the movie Eddie Murphy was supposed to win the Academy Award for? Mm, I don't know. A show, not show, Dream Girls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was the shoo-in of the week. He won, like, the awards before that. Everybody said he was going to win. And then they said, Alan Arkin. Okay. And he's like, what? And he like, I remember that. He'd name. never been so mad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I need to go work because we have a Blitz, Blitz tournament. Right. Also, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, My job's are? done. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who do I raid? One, two, three, or nobody. Mm -hmm. And nobody's winning. Um, but I raid three, I think. Well, I could yeah. raid two. Mm -hmm. Either one. Good enough. I always type it wrong. Yay! Cleomina is rating with a party of 108 just as I leave. Hooray! Oh, thank Thanks you for, for the raid. raid. Go raids. Bye. Mark says Alan Arkin's still alive. What is he, 400 yeah. years old? I just thought he was dead because I didn't think he could be that old. All right, I have to go. Bye. I'm sure he's alive if I Mark said he is. I can't wait to the end. Alan Arkin. <laughs> Wow, I wonder how old he is if he's alive. He's 87. He is alive. He's much younger than, uh, you know, what's his name? Mel Brooks. I didn't know he was still alive. Hooray! Go Alan Arkin. I thought Adam Arkin was getting old. Man, Alan Arkin was in every movie ever made. If you go to his Wikipedia... They just list every movie that was ever made and just say he was in it. Just copied and pasted every movie. Yay, he's still alive. R.I.P. Man, when I talk about people and they're alive, they're not alive much longer. I shouldn't talk about them. Terrible. Hmm, interesting. Indeed. All right. Hey... Uh, the queen is immoral. What? Who would... Why would he raid someone with 4 billion viewers? No, I raided uh, Hikaru yesterday. I try to raid everybody if possible. Yeah. Well-timed hype train. What? I didn't see a hype train. That's for sure. I never have a hype train. But thanks for the raids and, and so forth. Mainly and so forth. And I'll see you guys tomorrow and every day on the chess.com Twitch um, channel. Also, I guess, on their YouTube channel. Um, I'll do commentary for the World Cup every day starting tomorrow. Probably with Naroditsky almost every day. So I'll see you bright and early, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning for the World Cup. It's the playoffs tomorrow. Playoffs for, for the second round and, uh, and so forth. Bye.